A network is a group of devices that are connected together that can communicate with each other. We say device because a network can contain personal computers like desktops and laptops, peripherals like printers, servers, and networking devices like routers, all of which need to be able to talk to each other. A local area network, or LAN, is a network where all the devices are in the same geographically close location, for example within a single building or within a group of buildings. Your school or college might have several buildings, but all the computers in each building can communicate with each other as they are all in the same network. The advantages of a local area network are that peripherals such as printers can be shared within a business between multiple computers which will save the business money. Files can be stored in a central location so that users can access them from any computer connected to the LAN. Important documents can also be shared with all users. We can centrally manage computers which is more efficient. For example, installing software or backing up all of the computers without having to do so manually on each device. A wide area network, or WAN, is a set of computers that are connected over a large geographic area, such as an entire country or the whole world. It can also be a collection of networks connected over a large geographic area. They are connected using some form of transmission medium provided by a third party. It could be radio waves, satellite communication, phone lines, or fiber optic cables. The most common and well-known version of a WAN is the internet. The advantages of a wide area network are that confidential data can be shared between different offices in a business with a very high level of security. Files can be accessed from different business locations and important documents can be shared between all employees within the organization. A dedicated WAN uses private leased lines rather than broadband internet connections to transmit data, which will usually provide faster data transfer speeds. Regardless of the type of network, networks do not all function at the same speed. In fact, the same network may have wildly different speeds at different times of the day and different days of the week. This is because there are several factors that affect network performance. The first of these factors are bandwidth and latency. The bandwidth of a network is the amount of data that can be transferred from one computer to another in a given period of time. This is measured in bits per second, or more commonly, megabits per second. A high bandwidth is better than a low bandwidth as you can transfer more bits of data per second. The latency of a network is a measure of the time it takes for a data packet to transfer over a network. This is measured in milliseconds. A low latency is better as the data can reach its destination faster. We often only think of bandwidth when thinking about network speed, but increasing your bandwidth may not help network performance if your latency is poor. Let's explain this with an analogy. Increasing your bandwidth would be like adding lanes of a motorway. The more lanes you have, the more cars, or data packets, you can transfer at once. However, the latency is like the speed limit of the motorway. It doesn't matter how many cars can travel at the same time if the fastest they can travel is 10 miles per hour. Another factor that affects network performance are the number of devices on the network. Have you ever noticed your internet is running slowly when a lot of your family is using the internet? Maybe your brother is streaming a TV show and that is causing your online game to lag. This is because on a network, we share the bandwidth with everyone else on the network. That might be the bandwidth of your home Wi-Fi being shared with your family, or the bandwidth of your local internet access with other people living in your area. The more people connected to a network and using it, the more we need to share our bandwidth and the slower our network performance will be. A final factor that affects the performance of a network are transmission errors. In almost all situations, a network will inspect the data it receives to see if there are any errors, such as data being corrupted by interference. When this happens, the receiver will automatically request for the data to be resent. Having to wait for the data to be resent will obviously slow down network performance. There are lots of different reasons why transmission errors might occur, but generally, when there is more interference, such as from other devices using the network, then we are more likely to see these errors. So, networks are where two or more devices exchange data with each other. 
A LAN is a local network where devices are in a close geographical area like a single building. LANs are great for sharing access to resources, storing files centrally so they can be accessed flexibly, and for managing devices from one computer. A WAN is a collection of devices or networks that are over a large geographical area. WANs are good for sharing confidential data, distributing important documents, and providing this data as quickly as possible. Network performance is affected by the bandwidth, latency, number of devices, and transmission errors.